Welcome to Cancer Research Africa. Cancer Research Africa is pleased to present our special segment that will introduce our next generation of African cancer scientists. Now in this segment, we will highlight the cancer research of African postdoctoral fellows, graduate students, and clinical residents. My name is Abimbola Odadina. I'm the host, producer, and media director of Cancer Research Africa. Now today we do have a special guest who might look a little familiar. I'll go ahead and have him introduce himself. My name is Oluwa Sheito. I am Africa's operations manager for the Prostate Cancer Transatlantic Consortium. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's a little different. You're usually with me on the other side asking the questions. So today you're one of our guests and you get to sit back and answer some questions for us. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for um, having me. Of course. Welcome to Cancer Research Africa. What is your specific area of expertise and what type of cancer do you focus on? My job basically is to facilitate a bridge between research activity and research outcome. Now, what from the moment you start thinking about that research question, um, your methodology, your study design, your objectives, your study design, your methodology, and before you get to that outcome, there has to be a link. The outcome in, in the essence that your final results, your data, and then presenting it to the end user, there is a gap in between. So my job is to facilitate that process, to put a structure to it, you know, to help you with what you need as an investigator. And then to also make sure that we are there to best practices, that research, that research has been done. All right, thank you so much, beautifully put. Now, can you tell us a little bit about how you developed an interest within cancer research? Uh, that's an interesting question. I developed interest for cancer research through the nature of my job. Yeah, I came into CAPTC as a junior research coordinator, having had a previous experience as a research assistant, but I didn't really have much knowledge in cancer research, but I got into the work system and I had I had a senior colleague and she helped me out in, in ways that I didn't expect. And I also had a boss that I was reporting to who was willing to show me the ropes. And also a great mentor for everyone, Professor Dedino, was always ready to help me learn in every possible way. And I was also willing to learn. And so I started developing interest in cancer research. And here I am. Yeah, I had to go through some training. Yeah, I had training in uh, behavioral research. I had training uh, in health disparities and I had a training in clinical trials. So yeah, I had training in those areas and those have helped me to develop interest in cancer research. Perfect. Personally, what do you think has helped you overcome any obstacles that you have experienced so far as an up and coming scientist in Africa? I would say the mentorship that I received and the people around me. Yes, like I said previously, I had a senior colleague who was my go-to person. And then I had someone else who we don't share the same region, but was always there for me, Ms. Parisa Fati. She was willing to always help me learn, like I could go to her. And also I had, um, I had Ruth with me then too. So I could always go to her and say, oh, this, I'm in trouble with this. Oh, I need to know learn this, I need to do this, I need to do this. And they were ready to show me the ropes. And I had people like Professor Pukwala, who was ready to teach me also. And I said, like Professor Dedina, there, were, there, there was also um, Dr. Catherine, um, 
Dr. Ogo, so many other people, um, Professor Okoye, I can't forget that she also, so many people, Professor Rotimi, they were all there to you know, help me out. And I was willing to learn. The willingness was there for my own part and the mentorship that I received. Very, very important that you did mention mentorship because it's it's very vital to have a group of people around you who can inspire you and help you out because you can never really just navigate through a career by yourself, right? You do need that help from mentorship. So I'm very happy that you did mention that. Now, can you please briefly describe the most impactful research that you've worked on so far, including the reason the research is important for African cancer patients? I would say it's um, Iron Man at, at the moment. It's an ongoing study that is um, International Registry for Ad Men with Advanced Prostate Cancer. So it's a study that is ongoing at the moment. And it's, it's interesting because I am the national coordinator on that, the national PI, which is Professor Popola. And it, the study is interesting. This is this is a registry for prostate cancer, men with prostate cancer. It and it's 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 interesting in the essence that it's doing things that we don't usually do. For example, we have recently translated our prompts, our e-prompts into indigenous languages in Africa, in Nigeria. You know, for the four major indigenous languages. Yes, we know we have other languages, but in time we will get there. And right now, it's not just that. We are translating through the EBA Center, we are translating um, consent form, the video consent form into indigenous languages in Nigeria, the four major indigenous languages. So, yes, this will help um, participants who we recruit to understand not just, we don't have to do the translation for them. They can basically hear it themselves. Not that we are trying to say, oh, this is what it is. But now they understand it. They understand what they are getting into. And it is important that participants understand what they are signing up. Yes, we know it is not mandatory, but they need to understand the process, what they are signing up for, what the study is for, and what they what they are going to get at the end of the study. Because yes, there has to be like, it's a research, so there has to be an outcome of that research, whatever it, it is the outcome. And then it is unique because it is a data pool, a registry for Africa. This is a registry for Africa, a posted registry for Africa, where in the nearest future, scientists, other scientists can come who want to conduct one research and they need that data, they can come and say, oh, we know that this data is available here and they can just dive into it and pull out from that data rather than having to go through that process of recruiting participants themselves again. Now there is a collating site, there is a collating center for that. And that is what the Ironman is doing. Perfect. Now, what can we expect from you next relative to Cancer Research Africa? Um, what you can expect for me is to develop myself more in the area of cancer research administration. You know, you cannot stop learning. I want to learn more, you know, grow more, and be able at one stage in life, be able to also mentor other others as the way I have received mentorship, be, be able to help others and contribute largely to cancer research in Africa, because there's a long way to go in cancer research in Africa. We have a long way to go. We're not there yet, we're just coming. And so I want to be able to contribute to that in a positive way and be able to say, yes, I have done something in this area and be able to help humanity in that area, not just Africa, as you know, it will have to, at one stage, Africa will have to export our knowledge to the world. And so be able to export that knowledge to the world that, okay, this is what we have found, that this is what we can do, and this is what we are doing. 
So I want to be able to do that. And that is where I want to get to in my career. Definitely, definitely. I love that as well. Now, what would you say are the top three pieces of advice that you would give to another next-gen African cancer scientist or Africans who are considering a career in cancer research? I would say, okay, number one would be open to mentorship. Yeah, because we think we think we are an island of knowledge. Most times we think we're an island, and no one is an island of knowledge. You have to be ready to be mentored. You have to be ready to be. Even your mentor has a mentor. So if your mentor has a mentor, why wouldn't you want to be mentored? Because you keep learning every day. You keep learning every day. You keep learning every day. And that will be the first. And then the second thing is, it's not just enough that you have a mentor. You have to be ready to learn and relearn. In the essence that, yes, you already know something. But you have to be ready to learn other things. The things you think you know might not be the adequate things you need. So you have to be ready to learn new things. Be open to that. And the third thing would be to still keep learning. I don't really have anything just to keep learning. You have to keep learning every day. You have to be willing to grow. I'm sorry, I knew where I started from. I know where I am. Yeah, and I know I'm not there. So I am willing to grow. Those three things, be ready, open to mentorship, be ready to learn and be willing to grow. Don't rush yourself too much, but don't be too slow. Those yeah. are my advice. I would definitely agree with everything that you said. I feel like you gave amazing, very valid advice that you should follow in order to really become successful in your career path in cancer research. Now, lastly, is there anything else that you would like to share with us? Um, I think I would say that cancer research in Africa is something we should all be involved in. When I say that as scientists or what, clinicians, whatever post you are holding, we should all be involved in it. We shouldn't just sit back and say, oh, let the researchers handle that. No, it's not just about, because it would all bounce, it would bounce back to everyone if we just fold our hands. It's funny that, I wouldn't say it's funny, but it's shocking that cancer is rising in Africa. And so it's one of the, sorry, it's one of the um, leading cause of death right now in Africa. Be it whatever you want to call it, be it prostate, breast cancer, and whatever kind of cancer you can need. So we have to invest our time in it, our resources, we have to deeply invest our time and resources in research so that we can come up with a cure for this menace in Africa because we really need it. And so that we can give the upcoming generation a future to look up to. Yes, yes, most definitely. Thank you so much for joining us on Cancer Research Africa podcast and YouTube channel. We have hope that you've learned a thing or two. Please make sure that you do connect with Sayi to expand your network with Cancer Research Africa. I'll go ahead and put his Twitter handle on the screen so you can go ahead and connect with him. Remember, the best evidence comes from research. Once again, my name is Abimbola Odadina. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us and watching and for keeping cancer research going in Africa. Make sure you guys give us a thumbs up and subscribe and comment on our video and we'll see you next time.